We're going to learn about module 10.1, which is an introduction to solving quadratic functions. So in module 10, lesson one, we are learning about the benchmarks AR 3.1, which is algebraic reasoning 3.1. Given a mathematical or real world context, write and solve one variable quadratic equations over the real number system. So the warm up for today is to factor this quadratic polynomial because in module nine, the last thing we learned about is how to factor a quadratic polynomial. So this one, remember our A term is equal to one and our B is three and our C is negative four. So really what you're trying to find is what are the two numbers that multiply to give you negative four, but add together to give you three. So see if you can figure that one out and then check with your teacher later to see if you have it correct. All right, so a quick review of the standard form of a quadratic function. That's a function written in the form f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So we highlighted in our module nine notes, our a is pink, our b is blue, and our c is green. So we're gonna stay with that the same color scheme today. Remembering or knowing that moving forward, our C or our constant, the number that's by itself, is our y-intercept. So that's not important for today, but it is important for you to know moving forward as we continue on our path of quadratic functions. Okay, so what is a parabola? The parabola or parabola, or kids like to say, what is that word, parababa? But parabola is the correct way to say that, is the U-shaped graph of a quadratic function. So see how that shapes or makes a U? It can also be turned upside down, but anytime you see a U or an upside down U, then you're talking about a quadratic function. Now the roots of a quadratic function are where the parabola crosses the x-axis. Remember our x-axis is this line right here, okay? This here is our x-axis. So where our roots are where this parabola crosses the x-axis. So that's that point and that point. And I would label those as your roots, okay? Other names for roots, because they're gonna use, be used interchangeably across tests and texts and quizzes and all kinds of things. You will often hear re roots referred to as zeros, x-intercepts, or solutions. Okay, if you're asking for a solution, what you're really asking for is the roots. Okay, when we solve quadratics, we are finding the roots or the zeros. And quadratic functions can have three different types of roots. So in order to find out what type of root it has, we're going to use the discriminant formula. And the discriminant formula is used to determine how many roots a quadratic function has using the formula b squared minus four times a times c. So if we plug all of our numbers in from our standard form quadratic function into this formula, if we get a positive number, then we, oh, so what we're keeping in mind is that we're only going to plug in the numbers. We're not plugging in the variables. So some students in the past have tried to put in variables into this formula, but this formula just is the numbers not the variable, okay? So our positive discriminant, if we plug in all the numbers and we end up with a positive number, then we get two real roots. When we plug in all of the numbers for A, B, and C and we get zero, then we have one real root. And if we plug in all those numbers and we get a negative number, a negative discriminant, then we have no real roots. So on that, this next slide, you're gonna see how those relate and I'll show you how to plug it in using the formula. So in this first example here, we have x squared plus 6x plus 8. The first thing we're going to do is identify our a, b, and c terms. So our a, if it's not listed, is just going to be 1. Our b here is 6, and our c is 8. So we're going to plug in 1, 6, and 8 into the formula b squared minus 4 times a times c, and simplify. So we're gonna have six squared, which is 36. And then we're gonna take negative four times one. Well, that's just negative four and negative four times eight. 
is going to be negative 32. So 36 minus 32, well, that gives me a positive 4. So that is a positive discriminant, or what a positive discriminant looks like. So that means that I have two real roots. And so what I've done is I've actually given you a visual, a graph of this formula, of this function, so that you can see that it does cross the x-axis in two points. So there's two roots, okay? Here, we're looking at x squared plus 6x plus 9. So this is our function. This is the graph of the function. Now let's plug it into our discriminant formula to see how it works. So again, our a is 1, our b is 6, our c is 9. So we're going to plug that into the discriminant formula. So we're going to end up with 6 squared minus 4 minus a 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 9. So the first thing we have to do is simplify that 6 squared, which is 36. And then we have to do this multiplication on this side of the equation, which is negative 4 times 1 times 9. And we're going to get a negative 36. So what's 36 minus 36? Well, that's 0. And yes, we have 0. So this is what it would look like on our graph. You see that that parabola is only touching that x-axis at one point. And so that one point is our root. So that's when we have a zero discriminant. When we plug in all of the numbers to our quadra to our discriminant formula and we get zero, that means that there's only one root or one point where that parabola touches the x-axis. Finally, the main reason why we have the discriminant or what the discriminant is useful for are in those times when we don't have a root, where we're trying to factor, but it's just not working out. So we can always double check to see if it, there's even a possibility. So here again, we have a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to 7. So if I plug those numbers into the discriminant formula, I get 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7. So 4 squared, if I simplify that, is 16. Negative 4 times 1 times 7 is negative 28. Well, 16 minus 28 is going to give me a negative 12. And because this number is negative, because my discriminant is negative, that means I have no real roots. That means that this parabola is not touching, nor will it ever touch, the x-axis here. So when there are no real roots, that is because we have a negative discriminant. All right. So here are four equations. Of course, I'm not giving you the graph. The graph is just there so you can visually see it on that previous slide. Now I want you to use the discriminant formula and see if you can figure out how many roots each one of these functions has. So you're going to try that on your own and check your answers with your teacher, teacher or in Canvas. All right. So how does factoring a quadratic relate to solving a quadratic? So in module nine, we learned how to factor a quadratic function or quadratic polynomial. Well, how does it relate to what we're doing now? Let's see if we can figure it out. So f of x is our function, and here's the parabola of that function. Okay, we can determine the roots just by looking at the graph. So our roots of this function are negative 3 and a positive 1. So that's the point negative 3, 0 and 1, 0, or our roots would re just be referred to as x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to 1. Pretty easy to identify our roots when we're looking at a graph. But what if we don't have the graph? So what we can do is we can look at this function, x squared plus 2x minus 3, and we can factor it like we learned in module 9. So quick review on how we factor is we're going to take our a times our c, so 1 times negative 3, and we have negative 3, that's equal to negative 3, so that goes in the top of our triangle or our x puzzle, sorry, and then we have our positive 2 because that's our b term. So what we need to determine is what multiplies to give us negative 3 but adds together to give us a positive 2. Well, 
negative 3, there's only two factors. There's 1 and negative 3 or negative 3 and 1. So if I add 1 and negative 3, I get negative 2. If I add 3 and negative 1, I get a positive 2. Well, that's what I need. I want this positive 2. So that means my factors are a positive 3 and a negative 1. So once I found my factors, remember, if our a is equal to 1, we don't need to use this area model. You can use it if you prefer, but it's really not necessary because we've already found our factors as x plus 3 and x minus 1. So now that we have our factors, now what you have to do is you're going to set both factors equal to 0 and solve for x. So if I set x plus 3, if I set equal to 0, I subtract 3 from both sides. Well, x is equal to negative 3. If I set x minus 1 equal to 0 and I add 1 to both sides, x is equal to 1. So I found my zeros to be x is equal to negative 3 and x plus 1. Well, so my roots and my zeros are the same thing. So what that means, or what I notice, is that when I solve for x, I get the roots for my answers. So starting tomorrow, we're going to start factoring polynomials like we did in mo Module 9, but now we're going to take it a step further and actually set them equal to 0 and solve for x. All right? So in this next slide, I want you to try question, examples 5 and 6 on your own. And what you're going to be doing here is identifying your solutions and then writing your factors. Okay? Refer, please be sure to refer to your notes so that you make sure that you have it correct. And I will check your work in class. All right. Have a great night.